Alright, so it's time for the next video on What the Hector Gone. Uh, cue the intro. What the heck? Tagon. What I'm doing today is I'm going to share a rather simple fact um, to do with integrals um, that was rather surprising to me when I figured it out. I've never seen this anywhere. I didn't know that this was, like, really easy to figure out. But it's, it's something quite simple that I've never seen anywhere. Um, and I'm going to share it with you today. Uh, it has things to do with areas under the curve that are powers of the natural logarithm of x. So let's take a look at that right about now. Today I'd like to explore sort of a rather strange integral. But first I need to do a little preliminary stuff. So you may be familiar with a function called the natural logarithm of x. Logarithmus naturalis of x. Uh, ln of x, yes. So, it is the inverse of the exponential function e to the x. If you plug e to the x into this, you will get x back. If you plug this into e to the x, you will get x back. They're inverses of one another. And the graph looks like this. So this is the xy plane. Let's get one more color. And uh, because it's the inverse of e to the x, and as e to the x goes to, uh, as, you, as x goes to negative infinity, e to the x goes to zero, which means for a natural logarithm of x, as x goes to zero, natural log of x goes to negative infinity. And it is zero at one, and it grows very, very slowly like that, off to infinity. Uh, it does eventually get infinitely large, uh, albeit very slowly, hence the name lo uh, logarithmic growth, right? The, the things that grow logarithmically grow very slowly. Um, and what I'm about to ask is about this area here, right? The area under the curve, or I guess above the curve in this case, from 0 to 1. Now, it does shoot down to negative infinity, which means there's a discontinuity here. But it turns out that this is a finite area. And if you do the integral from negative infinity to 0 under e to the x, which looks like this, right, the exact inverse of the function, and you do that area under there, you will get 1. The, the area under this part of the curve is exactly 1. Which means that the area under this part of the curve for the natural logarithm is also exactly 1 because it's the exact same area of the graph just moved, right? So even though this is a discontinuity here, this, this area under here is 1. But I was curious as to what would it be like if we asked about the area from 0 to 1 under not just the natural logarithm of x, but different powers of the natural logarithm of x. Now, if this were the absolute value of the natural logarithm, meaning that this part of the curve was actually above the x-axis, then any sort of fractional powers would be just fine with regards to the real numbers, because any fractional powers of purely positive numbers or zero, so non-negative numbers, will be perfectly real and well-defined. But because this is all negative, any sort of powers that are, um, well, negative, or uh, any sort of weird fraction, are going to cause complex numbers to appear. But I'm not going to consider the, the absolute value of the natural logarithm of x. We're going to simply take the integral from 0 to 1 of these different uh, powers, right? So we're just going to sort of cycle through powers and see what we get, uh, because it's very interesting what you end up with. And I did not at all see it coming when I, when I, when I worked it out. It's very easy. It just requires a, a couple, I think, only one substitution, actually. So it's actually quite a, quite a surprising result. So, what we're going to do, get my flipping headphones out of the way, is we're going to take the integral from 0 to 1 of, and this is going to be our new function, we're going to call this, we're going to call this like, I don't know, L of x for logarithm. L of x, capital L of x, is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural logarithm of t to the power of x with respect to t. So, the function is not based on the bounds, it's based on the power of the integrand that's happening here. So capital L of x is the integral from 0 to 1 of different powers of the natural logarithm of t. Okay, and the, 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 the variable is x, right? t is just the dummy variable that the integral is being taken with respect to because this is a definite integral, right? So as it turns out, all we need to do is make a substitution. All we're going to do is we're going to let t equal e to the negative u, which implies that ln of t is going to equal negative u, very simple. And it also implies that dt, and now we just got to take the derivative of this. Well, the derivative of e to the negative u is 
e to the negative u times the derivative of the power, which is just negative 1. So we get negative e to the negative u du. And now we can uh, also find out the, the, the bounds of the integral. When this is 0, we plug 0 in here, the natural logarithm of 0, uh, I know that's not a defined value, but it goes to negative infinity, and negative negative infinity is positive infinity. So this integral is going to have a lower bound of positive infinity, and the natural logarithm of 1 is 0, and negative 0 is 0, right? So we clearly have a mismatched bounds here, but that will fix itself quite clearly. Uh, we have figured out what the natural logarithm of t is. It's negative u. So we're going to have, instead of the natural logarithm of t all to the power of x, we're going to have negative u to the power of x. So we have negative u to the power of x. And then we also have to plug in our replacement for the differential. So we have negative e to the negative u du. But look at that. We have a factor of negative 1 here which means we can swap our bounds, right? If you take, if you, if you evaluate an integral backwards, it's the negative of if you evaluated it forwards. So we can use this negative to flip the bounds. Uh, so I'm just going to erase that, erase these parentheses, and flip the bounds. So from 0 to infinity. And you may notice something starting to come out of the woodwork if you're familiar with special functions. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the power, the, the exponent rule here that if you take the exponent of a product of things, you can break it up into the product of those exponents. So I'm going to have negative 1 to the power of x, which is odd, pretty, pretty odd. Uh, but because negative 1 to the power of x is a constant with respect to u, I can just take that out of the integral and put it out front as a constant multiple. And so we're going to have negative 1 to the power of x times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the x times e to the negative u du. Now hopefully, to those who are uh, well versed in special functions, this will actually look kind of familiar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly rewrite x here in, the, in that. So I'm going to have negative 1 to the power of x times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the, and in parentheses, x plus 1 minus 1, because if I add 1 and then subtract 1, uh, then the value hasn't changed, right? I haven't changed anything, times e to the negative u du. Now, hopefully this is really familiar now, because we have u to the power of something, minus 1, times e to the negative u du, from 0 to infinity. This right here is the definition of the gamma function, which is the continuation, the analytic continuation of the factorial function. And because the input here is x plus 1, this is gamma of x plus 1. So we have, as our final answer to this question, we have that this integral, the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural logarithm of t raised to the power of x dt, is equal to negative 1 to the power of x times the gamma function evaluated at x plus 1. Now, I did this little shift here. But if the gamma function is something minus 1, and if you recall that the, the functional, one of the, not the functional definition, but the, the relationship to the factorial is that uh, the gamma of x is equal to x minus 1 factorial, that means that gamma of x plus 1 is equal to x factorial. So what this is also equal to is, in a almost nicer looking sense, since people are probably more familiar with the factorial function, is negative 1 to the x times x factorial, which is just wacky. So this is the final answer to this function, right? We have L of x, which was the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural logarithm of t to the power of x dt, is equal to negative 1 to the power of x times gamma of x plus 1, or negative 1 to the power of x times x factorial. I imagine, and I'm pretty sure it's the case, if you did this integral of the absolute value of the natural logarithm of t to the power of x, you would have just gotten x factorial, because the absolute value of negative 1 to any power is just 1, right? Because it has a magnitude of 1. But this is way more interesting, because look what I can do now. So imagine for a second, we can just plug in some values, right? We can just plug in some values. Imagine for a second I wanted to take the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of the natural logarithm of t, uh, with respect to t. The square root is just the one-half power, so all I have to do is plug in one-half for x. So the one-half power, we use this symbol as well to represent square roots, so 
And I know that it's negative from 0 to 1, so the square root of the natural logarithm from 0 to 1 is going to give complex numbers, but the in math works out just fine when you're talking about complex numbers. Um, and so we're asking, what's the integral from 0 to 1 of the, the square root of the natural logarithm of t with respect to t? Well, all we have to do is plug in 1 half into this equation. So we're being asked to say, what is negative 1 to the power of 1 half times 1 half factorial? Or one and, uh, the gamma function evaluated at 1 and a half. Well, by definition, the square root of negative 1 is just i. And if you've ever done any special function evaluations of the gamma function, you'll know that 1 half factorial, which is not the same thing as saying, how many ways can I order half an object? Because that's, that doesn't make sense, right? The continuation of the factorial function leaves the original definition or the original like physical application of what it means uh, once you've extended it. But it's a perfectly valid extension. You end up with the square root of pi over 2, which means that the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of the natural logarithm of t with respect to t is i times the square root of pi over 2, which is just wacky. And I think this is about uh, i times 0 0.86, something like that. Uh, so it's a pretty cool little thing we got going on here. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this was really enjoyable for me to figure out, even though it's such a simple little thing. It's very, a very interesting relationship. So uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell or whatever, um, and stay tuned for more What the F***ed